The other day, a prominent dating coach for men who helps men who are basically in their 20s and 30s learn the confidence to connect with women. He has over a million subscribers on his YouTube channel, reached out to me to ask my perspective on the idea of women who claim that men are emotionally unavailable. And he wanted to know, what did that really mean? And I said to him, I think women have one perception of what it means, but this is what it actually means to them, is what I said. I said, it's when a man isn't progressing the relationship forward, he usually gets labeled emotionally unavailable. Okay, let me repeat that. When a man isn't progressing the relationship forward, he's usually labeled emotionally unavailable. Now, the other reason why I think women label men this way is that when a man isn't speaking a woman's love language, he gets labeled emotionally unavailable. Now, if you're not familiar with the five love languages, I highly recommend checking out the book, Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman. Now, my suspicion is that most men's love language, oh, I'll share with you the five love languages, it's, uh, words of affirmation, or in my case, I'm a Leo, so it's words of adoration, acts of service, quality time, physical touch, and gifts. Those are the five primary love languages according to Gary Chapman. Now, I think what happens is women tend to be more words oriented and men tend to be more actions oriented. So when a man is doing things for a woman, it's not being received in the same way because a woman is, is, is I, said, I was about to say expecting, but desiring the words of affection, a words of affirmation, uh, a words of adoration, when men oftentimes don't use words to demonstrate love. They might do things like opening a car door. That's a demonstration of love by a man. Um, making sure your tires have enough air in them. That's a demonstration of love for a man. It might not be the words, it might be the actions. So I think in this particular case, when he asked the question, he goes, wow, that really helps because I think there's some real confusion around emotional intimacy. And I'm going to lean into this in a moment talking about emotional intimacy. Now, I was watching another video the other day by Rabbi Friedman. If you haven't been following his work, I highly recommend checking it out. Um, just because it's kind of ancient wisdom applied to today's uh, dating marketplace. One of the things he said in his video is that a man knows within 90 days if he genuinely wants to be serious with someone. That's right. A man knows within 90 days. And what's interesting is I've interviewed hundreds and hundreds of men in happy relationships, and they all seem to claim the same thing. I knew relatively early that I wanted a serious relationship with this person. I can speak for myself. There's a picture of my sweetheart and I right behind me. I can tell you that very early on after meeting her, I knew I wanted to explore a significant relationship. Well, remember I said coming back to earlier where a man gets labeled emotionally unavailable if he's not progressing the relationship? See, a lot of men will be happy just receiving occasional companionship, occasional connection, and occasional sex, and they will stonewall the progression of the relationship. So what's the benefit of knowing this? Well, I think the benefit of knowing this, and by the way, <laughs> I will say this, I will get into um Man, how to make a man emotionally open up in a moment. So I just want you to uh, re um, recognize I will get there in a moment. Um, if a man isn't progressing the relationship forward within 90 days, then it's probably he's not either capable of a significant relationship, he's not capable of opening up emotionally, or he just doesn't desire it with you. If he is stonewalling, He's just happy receiving the benefits of occasional companionship, occasional sex, occasional connection without really investing much into the relationship. This is why I'm a big proponent of two people looking at the, the dating process with mutual effort. And basically, I'm, I, I appreciate what Matthew Hussey says, invest and test. In other words, invest, make some effort into the relationship and see if this person is also meeting you with effort and are they making effort towards you and are you investing as well? Those are just some of the signs that the relationship is progressing forward.
All right, so I talked about emotional intimacy for a moment. I think this is where a lot of women get hung up on this uh, area of relationship. And quite frankly, this is where men get hung up as well. See, ladies, you need to understand that we do have a hard time opening up emotionally because as little boys, we were taught to stuff our emotions, not show emotions, be a man, be stoic. We were literally raised with that dynamic if you're a baby boomer or a late baby boomer or a Gen Xer. That's what we were raised with. So expressing ourselves emotionally isn't something that comes easy for us. Now, ladies, you actually have an easier time with this because many young girls were, were encouraged to be open up emotionally with their girlfriends. So you have an easier time with this. So in some ways, when I know you all love the narrative that you can just sit back in your feminine energy and let a man lead, well, yes, men will lead in the structural areas of the relationship because we were raised to be that, at least uh, we were biologically, instinctually raised to be a provider protector. We weren't necessarily biologically or culturally taught to be the emotional communicators of the relationship. This is why I continually say to you, ladies, you are the emotional leaders of the relationship. If you want this to progress forward, then it's incumbent upon you to learn the skills to actually dive into emotional intimacy with your partner very early on. Now, one of the fundamental principles of emotional intimacy is developing a strong friendship with your partner. That's right, a strong friendship. You know, I remember I said I interviewed hundreds and hundreds of men and also women who are in happy relationship. And they all seem to say the same thing. I'm in relationship with my best friend. Now, it didn't necessarily mean they started as best friends. It means that as the relationship developed, what that really meant was, what the word best friend really means is, we have emotional intimacy with one another. Now, emotional intimacy means, intimacy means into me you see into me you see now i didn't coin that i heard that from mm -hmm. a therapist one day and i really like this concept of emotional intimacy and yet many of you ladies think you know emotional intimacy but quite frankly you don't this is why i highly recommend reading the book emotional intimacy by robert masters and let's just open the book for a moment there's a chapter called four steps for developing emotional intimacy. By the way, all the books I recommend are in the link below in the uh, description of this video under Jonathan recommend books. But the four steps for developing emotional intimacy. The first step in developing emotional intimacy is to identify what are you feeling? You know, it's interesting to me when people express feelings these days, it seems like they express a thought and they say, I'm feeling this thought. See, feelings are things like happiness, sadness, joy, frustration, confusion, contempt. You know, these are all feelings. They're not thoughts. You know, I feel like going to the store. That's not a feeling. I would feel happy if we went to the store. That is a feeling. Actually, in ladies' case, going shopping for clothes. Ah, 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 I'm just kidding. Ha, ha, ha because you don't need to uh, get in your car to go shopping for clothes. You can simply do that on Amazon. So first, identify what you're feeling with respects to the relationship and within the dynamics of the relationship. That would be number one. Number two, according to Robert Masters, is, um, oops, the second step. Let me find that. The th well, where did this page go? Huh, that's kind of funny. I'm having a hard time. Oh, the second step is directly state what you're feeling. I'm fe first identify the feeling, then state the feeling, just like I would feel happy going to the store. The third step is to make sure the other person is really hearing you. So make sure that you're connecting with one another to make sure you're heard. And the fourth step is to get into the uh, details without losing touch. Get into the details without losing touch. 
So I invite you to check out the book, Emotional Intimacy, to help a man emotionally open up. And you might both, you might want to get the book, The Five Love Languages as well, so you can determine what is his love language. Most men tend to be acts of service and physical touch. Women tend to be words and quality time for the most part. And this isn't true across the board. This is just some speculation here on my part. So I want to dive into today why our dating turns out to be this way, where we're emotionally disconnected with one another. I think one of the things that isn't happening today for so many people is they spend more time talking on their devices, connecting in a very superficial way, very artificial intimacy, and not really connecting face-to-face -face intimacy through the experiences of social activities, hobbies, mutual interest, and spending time with family and friends. That's how you build intimacy with a partner is in the doing of things and not in the talking of things. That's where friendships are built. And I think today, men and women do a terrible job at doing this in the dating process. And it's no wonder it fizzles out within 90 days because there isn't a true connection, especially for those of you that spend so much time in the cyber world of your dynamic and not in the physical world of your dynamic. In other words, you're spending years and months and months, if not years, just talking through text messaging and not through the physical building of intimacy. So I said earlier how men are rather stoic when it comes to um, expressing themselves or even progressing the relationship forward. And I wanna share a story with you in a moment about the, the TV show called The Good Doctor where there's a man on the spectrum who becomes a doctor and some of the challenges he has at becoming a doctor because he is like an emotional child. He's like an emotional child. See, that's the way many men are. They're emotional children. And I don't mean that they act like children in the world of responsibility. I'm talking about in the area of relationship intimacy. And a lot of men are somewhat stifled in this area. So I want you to think of every man as if they're on the spectrum in this way, this case. And just like in the TV show, one of the fundamental pieces of every character is to recognize who this person is and their personality and accepting that this person's personality struggles with emotional intimacy, emotional connection with other people. And they treat them like a child, not from, again, the physical world, but from the emotional world. And they have something called patience. That's right, patience. One of the things you must understand is if you're going to progress the relationship, if you want a relationship that progresses forward, then you must have patience when it comes to the emotional expressing for men who have been taught to be very stoic. Again, that's not all men, the vast majority of men. Have a bit of patience. In a moment, I'm going to give you some tools to use, but I want you to understand that change for men and women happens four different ways. Change happens in four different ways. The first way is when someone is hurting enough, they have to change. When someone is in a lot of pain, wherever it is in their life, they might be struggling financially, they might be struggling with their health, they might be struggling with their emotional, uh, emotional capacity to be expressive. If they're hurting enough and they feel like they have to make a change, that's one of the first ways a person will change. The second way a person will change is when they see enough to be inspired. They see enough, you know, uh, this is where role models come in in our world, where we see good role models and we go, God, I see so many beautiful couples out there that that's what I want. I'm inspired for that. See, yet sadly today, we don't have too many role models in this case, so we don't see enough to want to make a change. The third way we make change is that we learn enough that we want to. Many of you know that after my divorce, um, I had over 100 internet dates in one year, and I realized there was a consistent problem. I'd meet a nice gal, we'd have a really good time, something wasn't right. I'd meet another gal, I'd um, 
I, we'd have a great time and something wasn't right. And in one year I had over a hundred first dates or meet and greets, I should say. They weren't really dates, they were meet and greets. Well, I learned that the problem was me. So the problem wasn't them, I kept thinking it was them. I learned the problem was me and that's when I began doing a deep dive into personal development, self-help and spiritual work. I went to Tony Robbins, I went to the Hoffman process, I did Insight, in, in Insight uh, Institute, I went to a therapist to really get to know, I learned enough, you know, I learned enough in this experience that I wanted to change. And last but not least, when a person receives enough they're able to change. When they receive enough, they're able to change. Now, this is where a lot of women you get stuck is because you can give, 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 hoping the person can receive. That's why you have to do little tests along the way, a little, little, um, little uh, like drip marketing, a little bit seed planting along the way to see if they're capable of making a shift. So I said earlier, I wanna give you some tools because a man isn't going to open up unless these four things happen to make a person change. They're hurting enough, they see enough, they learn enough, and they receive enough. That's when a person is capable of making a change. Now, some of the things you can do to help along the way is set an example, lead by example, without compromising your boundaries. That's right, lead by example, without compromising your boundaries, without giving your power away. Now, giving your power away means being dependent on this person for your joy, your happiness. You know, sadly here in the United States, we are suckling on the nipple of, I need you to love me so I can feel good about myself. I need you to love me so I can feel good about myself. When you feel good about yourself, you're capable of receiving love. This is why I wrote my book, what the heck is self-love anyway? A journey of personal development, self-help and spiritual work. By the way, a link below to get a copy of my book. Why do I recommend this? It's not a dating book. It's an, it's an invitation to really learn to stand in your power and to love yourself so you don't need someone else to love you to feel good about yourself. Now, one thing I said earlier is don't over, don't force a relationship. When you're forcing a relationship, it will push a man away. Remember I said earlier about mutual investment. I think of it as two cars traveling down a two-way street or a two-lane street, excuse me, a two-lane street. At the same pace, are you mutually investing with one another? That's how to begin the early stages of a relationship. Because remember I said it only takes men about 90 days to know whether or not he wants to fully invest with someone. And I feel like that's a fair statement. Ask feeling questions. How did you feel about the ending of your last relationship? How do you think your partner felt about the ending of your last relationship? Those are really powerful questions. What do you feel you learned about yourself? What positive things did you learn about yourself with each relationship? Start diving into feeling questions. And remember, feeling questions aren't thought answers. Feeling questions are asking happiness, joy, sadness, confusion, frustration. Those are actual feelings. I think many of you, many human beings confuse thoughts with feelings and no wonder there's a lack of emotional intimacy in a relationship. The other thing is, you know, you can do is find time to talk when you're spending time in the car, if you're traveling. My sweetheart and I took a trip up to, um, to wine country and we were in the car for three and a half hours. Great time to connect and talk with one another. We're both captive audiences. And remember, you have to take a man's personality into equation. If he, see to gauge a man's emotional maturity, by the way, here's a link to schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. To gauge a, man, a, man's, a man's emotional maturity, emotional maturity, it requires understanding where he came from as a child. And if he had significant abandonment, significant abuse in his life, he may be incapable of going beyond the surface without, and every man is, okay, 
every man is capable of emotion opening up emotional emotionally speaking to develop emotional intimacy some men have it tougher than others and it can be based on their childhood remember i said we were boys were taught to stuff our emotions and feelings just remember that if you want a man to open up emotionally, you must be patient with them. You must recognize what his love language is and start to be able to receive his love language as well as guiding him along the way through leading by example. And it doesn't mean bombarding him with your feelings. It means encouraging one another to develop emotional intimacy through the methods I've just outlined in this video. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating with you? Please let me know if it is. Please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel. Hit that notification bell. And again, in the description below are a variety of ways to connect with me through my group um, and through coaching. All right, I think we've got enough for today. It's time for Q&A.